All right, so here I'm sitting with uh, beautiful Annabelle Walno. And Thank you. How do you do? Yes, doing good. How, how are you doing? You're sweating. <laughs> sweating. You're... Well, you know what it is. It's just the heat. It's just the heat. And where <laughs> I'm not are we nervous. Sitting? Where are we sitting, though? We're in the warehouse at 560. It's one of our warehouses. And this one, you know, we do even have the swamp cooler on. But it does get up to 104 in here. Wow. And uh, I'll... A sweatshop. <laughs> A sweatshop, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, it's it's like Houston. I'm feeling here, right? Humidity, and you know, you're getting um, uh, a lot of uh, sweat, you know, <laughs> because that's what happened in uh, Houston. You get a lot of sweats. So tell me about uh, your passion. And we are sitting here at the uh, furnishing families of Texas yes. warehouse. Yes, and we're actually at, this is pretty much the um, headquarters because in the back room we have this little tiny area that's air conditioned and heated. Yes. But the rest of it isn't. So <clears throat> this is all the housewares in this particular 2,500 square feet. Wow. And we have another 3,500 square feet over there and three 1,000 square feet up there. So everything's divided up. This is housewares and linens and d toys, you know. And um, over there we have all the furniture mainly and beds up there and yes. fix-it shop up there. Yes. So, you know, it's all spread out so it's organized. Wonderful. And uh, there is a family, like, I, I get to meet a couple of families who are helping, you know, uh, Thailand, and what was the other? Oh, well, Nancy. Nancy. So, Thailand was our first family, actually, yes. and she actually is um, very talented. And so, she's she cleans all the warehouses, and she also cleans Lan my husband Lance's studio, but she's also involved with the kids' church, and she loves the kids. Did you notice while... We were talking, she was organizing yeah. them and getting paints out and all this. Yes. I mean, it was a lot of information going on here. Yeah. And she's not even flinching. Yeah. <clears throat> she's in her element. On Sunday, she brings eight boys to church. Wow. And I was like, Thailand, you only have six seatbelts. <laughs> she goes, everyone's got a seatbelt. I don't know. Everyone has to have their own seatbelt. Yes. So she's really gregarious. And when she doesn't go to church, because it's, it's far for, it's 45 minutes from her house. So yes. she has kids church in her house. Yes. So she's asking me about that big whiteboard. So she's like, once that for her house? Yes. <laughs> That's fun, you know, wow. it's fun. Yes, and I really love your heart, uh, how you were talking to the kids and really like uh, loving on them, you know. Yeah, but we go way back now. Making them feel special, well, right? It's like three years now of friendship. Because yes. even when I first met them, they just didn't have any furniture. Yes. And they were already in a, <clears throat> an apartment, but I've already moved them three times in three years. Wow. So it's very unstable. So right? why were you moving them? like Eviction. Was, evictions. Okay. And everything had to be thrown away. Okay. And the sad thing is, really, with the poverty levels of these places they live in, <clears throat> there's bed bugs. So if, if your neighbors have bed bugs, you know, no matter what you do, they're going to try to come into your home. Yeah. So we put anti-bed bug covers on the, on the mattresses to save our investment, you know, to protect the family. But, you know, I mean, we're teaching these families how to be cleaner. Yeah. And, and Thailand goes in and he, she cleans and teaches them. And, and I was, we were ta chatting before, really, the Bible talks about the older women teaching the younger women for a reason because... If no one teaches you, how are you supposed to know? Yes. You just don't have instincts about certain things. Yes. So. And it's important, you know, learning and, you know, about the cleaning as well. So what is uh, all that started? What, what got you started helping people and, you know, loving on them? And well, we just had that water. Them. We had that water disaster at our house. And yes. then we gave away that bedroom set to Ty Lin. I yeah. asked the Center for Transforming Lives who needed a bedroom set. And when they said that she had just moved in from a shelter, yes. she did. And then she asked me if I could get her son a, a mattress. And then we did. And then all her people had mattresses and then needed mattresses. And, you know, but they didn't just need mattresses. They needed bedding. Then they needed a nightstand. They needed a lamp. We're in the lamp department here. Yes. And, you know, each home needs approximately either end tables or nightstands, five, five of that. They need at least five to seven lamps. Yes. We give them about 15 pieces of art. The art department's over there. And they need towels and sheets. They need dishes. They need silverware glasses cups they need everything so you'd be you'd be surprised how we take it for granted that we have mm -hmm. everything we need in our home and then when you meet the family that doesn't have one thing in their home where do you begin yeah we usually begin with the bed yeah and the, and the bedding and the bedding we really don't ever just give a mattress without the bed yes just for and, the, and you mentioned that the kids like like sleeping and uh, thailand i think you gave her the uh, mattress because her kids were sleeping on the couch the and couch or the floor or, or the floor or the car or the, or the car. air mattress yeah and in a lot of these places the children have their knees up with their shirt over their knees and they're sleep against the wall and Aww. they're just used to it and you look at that and you're like you, you can't believe how good they are at it 
Yes. And you just know they've been doing it a long time. Sleeping in a car and yeah. And they have to, and you know, the thing with children, they're very portable. Yeah. And they can acclimate. And these moms are such scrappers. They're such survivors. I know so many moms who have lived in their car, yeah. get a shower and go to work somewhere. Wow. And I, and I get their, they get their kids to school and they do it all the time. And I'm like, how many, how long have you been doing that? I met one mom who did it for over a year. Wow. I met other families that had seven or 10 kids who lived in an apartment with no furniture for over a year. Mm. That's two families I met the same year. And I just am so impacted by that. Yes. I mean, just how did you do it? Yeah. So you can do anything, I'm sure, you know, with the right, um, the right wherewithal and stamina. Yeah. And a lot of them aren't really, really partnering with God. Mm -hmm. That's why we are very adamant that everyone we introduce to the Lord, then they know we're not their source because yes. obviously we're not. I mean, we know we're not our source. Sorry, sound. But yes. but a lot of people will come and we'll give them everything. Then they think we're going to be their source forever. And it can't be that way because it's just not how God designed it. Mm. Not sustainable. Yes. Yes. So that's an aha. That's the beauty of it, you know. Yes. Having these new births, rededications, and a lot of people we meet are backslidden. Mm -hmm. And frankly, you know, when the hope is deferred and your heart gets so sick, you know, you kind of, but then all of a sudden when your desire becomes fulfilled, you get the tree of life and you get all this growth and strength. And that's really what we see. So a lot of these moms who you met today, they, they can, we bring them back. Yeah. And you know, it's just a matter of how well, you know, yourself, if you have friends, yes, if you're alone all the time and you're thinking in your head alone with yourself and you're head it's can, it can it can be a downward spiral so we have to help the, with the word of god and that's that's a big deal yes that's big good. deal and what is your vision though you know you're helping so many families and so many families are blessed and i could just see the smile on the faces of the children like how they are thrilled to be here because they are here to you know get the stuff and you looked at their shoes and say you know what it times to get the new shoes and uh what is your vision what what do you want the audience that are watching in different parts of Houston, uh, also entire Texas. What do you feel and what is your vision and how do you want people to support the vision? Well, I really feel like everybody can do something in their own area. Like yes. You can come so help support us. Yes. And we use all the money for the outreach. And you know what? In the same breath, you can do it yourself. Yes. Everybody can go around and see their friends or search their friends' children. And, and you know what? These days, especially, everybody doesn't have everything they need. Yeah. So you can actually just be Jesus with skin on and offer to do something for somebody and shock yourself that you did it. Wow. People get so oppressed with themselves <laughs> when they when they bless someone and they yeah. just love how it feels. Yes. Wow. But I'm not saying That's it in good. a negative way because you know, if nobody taught you to do that, you weren't brought up that way. Like it's foreign thinking for a lot of people. Yes. But most of my partners are so on fire with it mm. and they are addicted to it because they already know God bless them to overflowing. Yes. And so their great greatest joy is to help the next person along and bring them up a little bit. It's like a hand up. Come on, let me help you get a little higher. And yes. I have some groups who pray over all the needs and talk on the phone. And I'm not going to say that's counseling, but it is prophetic prayer ministry. Yes. And because we're not trying to start a counseling clinic <laughs> movement. Yes. I'm not saying that. But, yeah. you know, if I call, if you call if you call anybody, I'm not saying call me, but if you call in. And somebody cares about what you're saying and yes. listens to you and you get to talk about what it is. And then all of a sudden they agree with you in prayer, but all of a sudden you feel God move mm. and you can't deny what that was. You're like, wait a minute, something really just happened. All of a sudden your life has changed forever. And that little change, that little trajectory change in another week and two weeks in a month in a year, you're up here instead of still being down there complaining about it. Yes. Big. Wow. So we love the results. Yes. We're results oriented because we're spirit led. So what is the, um, you know, I'm very result oriented guy. You know, I like to uh, see if I'm investing my time, energy, money, finance, all these things. Like what I'm trying to accomplish with that, not just only for the sake of like investing or that's what I love to do. What are you, what is the bigger picture you're seeing? Uh, building families. Building families. Yes. And, you know, most of our families are single moms. We do have a few single dads. And we're, believe me when I tell you we're not against the married couple because I mean, it's always sound like I'm always promoting a single family, single parent family, but that's just who is brought to us yes. for our care. Yeah. So we wouldn't be pushing them away. Yes. But the reason I'm saying that is that my goal is, and it, my goal isn't to get everyone married off, don't get me wrong, but my goal is to get people established yes. and strengthened mm. and go through that place where they can get roots that go down. Our society, if I have my plant right here, 
I would clip off the roots to show you. This is what society is doing. Mm -hmm. It is clipping the root system off families. Oh. It's very strange. Yes. We grew up in an Italian family. Well, my maiden name is Naples, but between my dad's huge family and my mom's huge family, but she wasn't Italian, but her huge family, like um, from England and um, Scotland and Ireland, all these. But my point of saying it is, in France, there's like a lot of people who care about each other. So if I was going through something, I have, I have four sisters, two brothers, and they have children. And there's people I care about who care about me. So I'll never be alone in my journey. Yeah. And a lot of my single moms have no one. Yes. And I'll say, well, who do you have? And then one of, one of my single moms was surprising me after I knew her for three years. She told me that one of her sisters was coming to help her. I go, I didn't think you had any sisters. What are you talking about? She goes, I have nine foster children, so oh, wow. foster sisters. So I was in nine foster homes. And that just arrested me. How many of these moms who we minister to grew up in foster homes mm -hmm. with different people as the parents? Because their parents are long gone. Oh. And then they have all these kids with all these baby daddies. Like, I'm not judging that. But that is a whole thing I never heard of in my whole life. I'm 64 years old. And in the last four years, my whole education about all this is brand new. So I don't want you to think I ever studied all this or understood it and learned how to figure it out because I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I don't know about a family of nine that has five baby daddies and none of them are connected with that family and loving those children and supporting them and growing them up. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that's sustained. I don't know why that's fertilized and that's all over the Metroplex and this area. And it's crazy. Yes. So baby daddy is not helping at all. Mostly. They're just like, I haven't met. I've only met two baby daddies who helped. Oh, my goodness. Out of all the people we serve. You know, like, I, I'll do anything for my children, right? Of course Because you they're would. my children. And you care about them. Yes, and I care about it. I'm, I'm not just going to have a child and just disappear and, you know. I think in half of the so. time, a lot of these guys never knew they had a child because they have recreational sex. I told my husband, if somebody's going to have children and not feed them, after the first time that happens, they should have a vasectomy. And he said, you can't say that. I said, yes, I can. I said, yes, I can. Because you know what? They can always get it reversed later. Why should they be allowed to have unlimited babies who they don't care about? And then the system is going to grow them up. What does that mean? That's your tax dollars. And what are they using it for? Oh, my God. The worst money. The, the Most people on food stamps don't even buy healthy food because they don't know how. Yes. They don't even know what nutrition is. Yeah. So I, all I can you get me started on this whole subject. It's very difficult <laughs> yes. to stay calm and peaceful and talk about it because it's very unjust for the children. Yes. The children need, they need the ingredients of a man and a woman. Yes. I want to really find out if anyone is doing the Big Brothers. Again, when I grew up, we had the Big Brothers of America right near my home, and I saw it in action all the time. I don't know if it's still really strong, but we need men. Yes. We need all kinds of men to come forth now. Yeah. And a lot of these kids, even if they see my husband once in a while and get that little love tap of yeah. care and eye contact, It brings a joy and a stability and a, wow. a little bit grounded. And, and like he travels. He's not always here. He's inconsistent to say it at best, but he cares about him. Like you said today, you could see how they love. They could see the love in my eyes. Yes. You could see the joy in their face. Yes. Well, that's natural. That's not put on. Yes. I don't pretend to love them. I love them. Yes. You know what I mean? You don't pretend to love your children. Absolutely. So I don't know. Jesus and the Beatles, they all said it. All you need is love. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Jesus said it all about love, but yes. you know, he was strict too, but I'm just saying that I think we need a little more love around here. Yes, absolutely. Uh, your story, your, these stories that you shared with me really touched my heart. And I'm sure the people who are watching uh, online, it touched their heart too. Like, listen, in America, often people brag about, or it's nothing wrong with it. You got to do about that, you know, going over seas and helping and having an orphanage. But But so many kids here, you know, struggling, so many families here in America, and you're not just only saying, hey, we're sending, you know, money to Africa. There's nothing wrong sending money to Africa. But at the same time, like, what are we doing to impact our neighborhoods? Exactly. Influence in a very positive way, building up. up. So I'm going to ask you a question, Annabelle. So uh, since you're helping these people, um, are you helping them also get on their feet, maybe get a job in the future, or they forever be looking at back at furnishing families oh i don't know because the thing is a lot of them are getting jobs but yes. they aren't keeping jobs so um the trajectory of getting something that they really like and keeping it is a difficult thing so some of the moms i've i've moved three or four times have had six or ten jobs you know and so but they keep getting a job but it may not may not last so mm -hmm. we'll see about that because i actually most of the women i meet are not educated yes. so they haven't even finished high school 
Yeah. Not to say that judgmentally, just to say that it's really hard to get anything more than a minimum wage job for that education match or that skill set match. And so really, I want anyone so out there. So what is the solution, though, then? Well, because they can't afford to buy good food. They can hardly afford yes. an apartment. And they don't have a spouse who's also creating wealth, right? Mm -hmm. or, or bringing in some kind of money. Yes. So the poverty cycle continues, continues, continues. It's like if you cut a tree and you see all the circles. I find that that's a good illustration of what I'm looking at a lot of times. So a lot of the girls who I encourage, I just encourage them where I see their strength. Yes. I mean, one of my girlfriends, two of my girlfriends who I've met since the beginning, one of them became a videographer for me. I always encourage her. She's the most amazing voice. And she's doing voiceover work now. Wow. But she's the best video. I mean, yeah. she's amazing. Yes. Her name's Selena. Wow. And the thing about her is, like, not that she was a single mom, because she's not even got any children, but to just call out a gift when you see it in somebody, you know, and call it out and say, hey, did you realize that you have that gift? I didn't. So then they actually, if they take in any kind of uh, encouragement from you, not that I'm her mentor in any way, but just because I'm her friend. Yes. So like the anointing of recognition, if I recognize something in you, yes. call it out. So that's what I try to always do, call out what I see in my girls. You know, with Ty Lynn, she's an incredible cleaning lady, but incredibly as, and not only that, but organization. Yes. She comes in this warehouse and rearranges it all the time. She calls wow. me up, oh, I'm afraid if I put something in the wrong place, I go, Ty Lynn, you, never, you haven't done it wrong once yet, so stop complaining, don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. I come in here, I'm like, wow, like this table used to be over there, that table was over there, it was getting packed up, and she just figured, you know what, this will straighten it out, and it did, it jerked the slack out of it and opened up this whole area for more lamps. So, wow. and we just run out of lamps. Like this looks like a lot of lamps. It's not, we'll be, yes. we'll be needing more. I usually yes. buy 30 at a time. Wow. You know. So are you buying things uh, with the money that people donated or people also donate to furniture or Both. lamps or? Both. Oh. Okay. We have, we have stepping stones. We have um, upscale resale right here within two miles and also Christ Haven. And like I sent my guys without me today, they sent me pictures. We had to buy four couches, love seats and end tables. We were out. So. Uh, are the companies that you're buying from, are they willing to donate instead of like purchasing? Oh, no, no, no. They're secondhand sto stores okay. that are actually taking their proceeds for also charity. Okay. So uh, up, uh, Upscale Resale is really um, taking care of the children that are homeless in this whole zip code. Yes. There's tons of kids that are couch surfing in your zip code, I promise you. You may not know who they are, but there are tons of kids that have no home right now. And I live in a beautiful home, yes. and it's within 12 minutes from here. And between here and there, there's tons of kids that are homeless. Wow. So that, I will give, I spend a fortune, well, not a fortune. I mean, I spend thousands of dollars a month at Stepping Stone, not Stepping Stones, at Upscale Resale and Christ Haven. Wow. And Christ Haven also has clothing, yes. but they both have clothing. And yes. we buy a ton of clothes, and we clean it. We have washers and dryers in the back, and then we actually give it to our families. Yes. And our best thing we're doing right now yes. is this. It's like a field trip to this high school. And they're yeah. letting us put in closets yes. so that we can give families clothes for free. Yeah. So the students can come shop for free. And it's through the guidance counselor, through the crisis center. And so that it's, it's safe, it's private, has its own entrance, the door locks, and it's going to be phenomenal. So I'm right. trying to get all kinds of clothes for that. Yes. And it will be for the whole family because upstairs yes. they have a much bigger space to put all the bins. Yes. How, how are you finding families though that are, are in need? Are you the guidance counselor through the guidance counselor okay. through twenty schools? Okay. She's Misty Gann is the top guidance counselor over all the guidance counselors, and they know they know their families. They know who needs clothes. Yeah. So I'm I'm really excited. I could not tell you. Yeah. That is the one thing we're doing right now that makes my baby jump more than anything. <laughs> is this clothes closet yes. that we're putting in? It's crazy. Yes. Is there other organization try to compete with you here? Compete? Yes. My husband goes, what do you expect? Of course you're going to grow. You're giving everything away for free. Yes. Nobody's trying to compete. Everyone's blessing us. So they're all okay. helping. Yes. I love it. I love their heart to help. Yes. That's wonderful. Uh, are you doing like a I binder compete. going into? <laughs> yes, because there's, I'm gonna give. there's somebody I'm gonna like, give. that would be good, like, right? For competing, I'm gonna wow. give. Let's see who who gives more most money, right? Yeah, because um, Gateway Church is partnering with us big time. Wonderful. Yeah, they chipped in a ton of money for our truck in the first place. Wow. So they've always been a blessing, and they have volunteers. They have gave us um, for for in, volunteer. In what week. ways they were able to help you though? Like they volunteer. have volunteer week, and they sent oh. us twelve volunteers. Wow. And even lately, they just bought forty backpacks for us and forty pencil cases because wow. I had everything for my first forty kids except those two things. Those are big things. Yes. So they actually went to Walmart and bought them. They didn't even have extra from their outreach. They did 
they did thousands. But their outreach was way before because we just did we just gave ours away yesterday. Yes. You know, so I'm just saying that those guys do everything with us and I love them. And they're they're open. Yes. You know, so they and they bring families to us too. Wow. Families in need. They're a mega church. They have massive amounts of, of need in their families too. You you look around, you think everybody's doing great. Everybody's not doing great. Mm-hmm. They have a good mask. Yes. You know what I mean? You don't ever know till they tell you. Yes. So true. But the beauty of what we do is we care about everything. So whether or not we're going to lead you to the Lord and or pray for a miracle in your body or a financial need me bet or take you in the back and give you some food or bring you out here and find you something you need. We're just going to try to have your need help you get your needs met. Yes. We're not trying to do anything else. Yes. And it's very, it's refreshing. So you mentioned Gateway Church. Is there any other churches that are, are pitching in and Well, per se, as a it? church, those guys are local to us. Yes. And they're right nearby here. And those yes. guys have been extremely generous to us. Yes. Above all the other churches. And there's ministries. There's lots of different ministries yeah. that help us out too, you know. Yeah. Um, some of them don't want to be named publicly because they really want to be under the radar. Yes. So, and you know, I respect that. Yes, absolutely. You know, my gosh, big mistake. <laughs> you broadcast somebody's generosity and they're horrified and then you, you realize, my gosh, I didn't think that was so bad. But everyone's got a different threshold of yes. publicity. Yes. Like my husband is a public man. I'm <laughs> private. As public as he is, I'm private. Yes. So isn't that funny? Yes. Yes. But I'm an extrovert and he's an introvert, but everyone thinks he's an extrovert, but he's not. He's only an extrovert publicly. I mean, in his outreach. At home, he recharges reading quietly. He doesn't want to go to all my dinner parties. He's not socially alive. Like me, I get alive socially. I love social things. He's not, that's not his thing. Yeah. He doesn't want me to invite him to everything. He's like, do I have to go? No, you don't have to go to this one. But I'll tell him if he has to go, I was like, please come to this yes, one. Yes. You and you know, to. <laughs> but you know what I mean? There's a different, yeah. everyone's got different recharge mechanisms. Yes. That's not saying that against him, but I'm just pointing out. Yeah. So. So you have this warehouse and you were also pointing you have another rare house and uh, what That's a other... triple and then triple. there's three singles. Yeah, so what this are... is really considered a double. Yes. But it has one door. But those have three big doors like that. Yes. So it can just op- we call it 630, 631, 633. Yes. So what are other items like what what are, uh, are the items that you're distributing besides lamps, your chairs and tables? What is... Bureaus. We really have a hard time keeping bureaus and end tables in. Yes. Right now we have one bureau, period. Yes. And it's not a good one. So we haven't given it away yet. And we have, you know, right now there's a, um, there's probably 15 people in the queue. This week we have four people out of work, which we don't have a very big staff. So having four out of work has slowed us down a little bit. Yeah. Because we can't, we aren't trying to uh, keep up with our normal. It's too much. Yes. But I mean, and plus it was 108 degrees <laughs> last week every day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. <crazy. laughs> but we still are out. The guys are out now. They've been out all day. So how many people are working and are you paying their full salary? Yeah. Well, my guys who are working, they, my movers make 22 bucks an hour Okay. and they work really, really hard. They're amazing. They're, you would look at some of them and think, wow, how much could you possibly move? Jacob looks like a very slender young man. He is a, like an ant who can carry 10 times his body weight. The Whoa. kid is so strong. Wow. When you watch him, you're like, oh. How is that possible? <laughs> you know, and yeah. it's incredible. And Andrew had been our driver for a year, and then he went and was working with Todd White's school, going to the School of Supernatural. So he took a year off, and then Keith is our driver who just had a hernia repair. Mm-hmm. So he's recovering. He's coming back Monday. My son got COVID for the third time. Oh gosh! Like who even thought that was possible? Yes. And then Julie had like a strep throat that went into pneumonia. Then then she had a knee a knee operation. So I mean, who would see all that coming? Yes. No. So it's a, it's just a hard thing on yes. the team. Yes. But everyone's going to be stronger when they get back. Yeah. So how many volunteer are you using? A lot of people are sending. We in did. We had like twenty. We actually had twenty volunteers, and now right now because of the summer and because of travel and all different things, I would say that our volunteer staff is like five. Yes. And it will go back up again, I'm sure. And there's three new people that would love to be volunteers. Two of my volunteers became paid staff because, um, with this, what happened within the last year of them needing to make money because their investments used to pay so much a month and now those investments shifted and they need to create that wealth so especially paula i had to keep paula because there's no way i could lose her yes she was she's spinning circles around all of us and she's the one who set up that all the clothes at the school wow and um she's amazing so. and plus she was trained with the harfushes who are very dear to my heart robin and christian harfush we lance and i we love them and um they were in, they were ministry gifts from florida and we were pastors 
we were pastors 20 years in Rhode Island. Yeah. So they used to come and minister at our church and they just taught us so much. Hey, here comes my guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. Slithering by, I see. <laughs> but anyway, um, so it's just amazing to have like-minded faith. People linking their shields, locking their shields as one and coming together for God and really all caring with the same values and morals. Like that's what makes us so amazing. We pray every morning, talk about whatever it is. We lay hands on stuff. We agree for our partners, agree for each other. It's a beautiful, beautiful Wonderful. partnership. So uh, how can so, uh, people, you know, contribute? What are you doing? Is there a website or mm. is it people can follow you on the social media or, or yes. furnishing yes. families of Texas? Yes. See, now it's a mouthful. So furnishing families of Texas.com is our website, but we also brought the, we were able to get the FFO Tex.com yes. because it's a mouthful, right? I was even misspelling it when I was emailing. So you can, you can write to me at Annabelle at FFO Tex.com or and about furnishing families of texas.com yes. but ffo text might be easier yes. and there's places to give online yes and it all goes into the full-blown mission of everything that's happening and so lance jr is involved with all our social media with facebook and yes. instagram and and it's good because he's showing little videos about what we're doing and yes this is the kids that when they get so happy they start dancing and it's just <laughs> fun to see you know yes. put a little child in front of a mirror and they start doing all this fun stuff <laughs> wow. and they light up Yes, that's wonderful. So you have your whole family, you know. Uh, yeah, because supporting. our son Carl works full time with my son, my husband Lance. My son Lance works full time with me. And Joy Joy, she, she's, you know, hovering around. She's been away for five years and now she's, she actually lives at home right now for a short time. And she's working um, at Tuvu. So Tuvu is another new social media company. Tuvu. Yeah. Never heard about Tuvu. 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 <laughs> Tuvu. Yeah, I'll introduce you. You know, all these social medias are popping up, right? So. Yeah. That one has no commercials. Yes. So anyway, I don't know. I they, they have a lot of great people on there. And all I'm saying is about, <clears throat> okay. you know, sharing. It's all about sharing. Wonderful. Well, it was very nice, although we're going to head to the studio and record another uh, actual segment. But uh, it's really good to like sit here and uh, and just get to know the warehouse and what, what you're doing here. And, uh, and um, you know, we're going to show all the warehouse as we're talking through, you know. Uh, the footage, uh, what are you doing here, what are the things are here, and uh, how people can really uh, chip in to help you, uh, you know, and to go even further than you are right now, although you are helping so many families, but uh, I would love to see that uh, whole Dallas, uh, you know, to be on fire for this. Well, I'll just tell you, this. Yes. last year we did 400, we fully furnished. When we yes. say fully furnished, that means every bedroom, kitchen, dining room, or, or what area they eat. <clears throat> a lot of our families don't have a dining room. But every room, 475 families. By the end of July, we have already done 475 families. Wow. And it's only 475 July. families. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's July, so we're not even in the Glory summer. to God. And it's been only uh, four years. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Make sure you follow uh, the Furnishing uh, Families of Texas. <laughs> and uh, also go on the website and, um, you know, just, just follow and share the videos with your loved one. Maybe somebody wants to donate and wants to like, uh, you know, help out with that, whether it's through the helping here voluntarily or whether, you know, you're bringing the stuff here, dropping here stuff, uh, and also, or, you know, just donating finance, you know, it's not about just building finance, but it's also uh, building families is more important. So thank you so much. God bless you. Have a beautiful day.